Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Facebook family. Good afternoon uh, to Cheryl and Andrea, who are joining us today uh, for my first double interview. Um, and Cheryl, all the way from the UK, Andrea from KZN. We are thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to have both of you here. Um, Andrea, a, uh, a teacher and an educator with a passion for IT that's um, taken the IT world by storm, I believe, because now she's developed and started a coding program, which is running in um, running as as a passion, a passion project of hers. So welcome, Andrea. Thank you for having me. Welcome, Cheryl. Cheryl is firstly my dearest, uh, my, my dear friend um, and uh, the warrior mom. She is a coach. She's a speaker. Um, she's a woman of many different talents, a strategist, somebody who's worked in the change and transformation world for many, many years as a consultant. Um, Cheryl joins us from the UK, and um, when I say she's a warrior mom, she is a mom to a son who was born with cerebral palsy, dystonia, and uh, help me there, Cheryl, with the word, micro. micro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, Cheryl. Thanks, Nashani. Nice to be here, all the way from the UK, where it is grey, 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 <laughs> and cold. We're heading into winter. Yeah, we're having beautiful, beautiful weather here heading into summer. So, um, yeah, welcome. Maybe let's start with a, with a question for both of you. Uh, what, made me, what made you choose your, your profession? What, what brought you into the space of educating and, in your case, Cheryl, coaching and, and the work that you do? Maybe if you can answer us, Andrea, first. Um, well, uh, as far back as I can remember, I always used to um, line my toys up and teach them whatever <laughs> lessons that I had learned at school. And uh, my belief is that teachers do more than just teach. Um, the impact ex extends far uh, beyond the classroom. So I think that I've always wanted to uh, wanted a career that allowed me to um, continuously engage with people as well as do something that impacted the lives of people around me. And um, the truth is school wasn't a walk in the park for me. And I understand how daunting it, um, it can be for learners, yeah. um, which is why I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, so that I can help kids who were like me uh, to achieve their life goals. And um, as a teacher, you are more than just an educator. You become a mentor, a confidant, and a friend. Oh. Um, becoming a teacher, yeah, lets you impart life lessons that students will never forget and puts you in a position to influence their behavior, uh, oh. exaggerate their strengths, and um, develop the areas of improvement. So in essence, I became a teacher to help shape the next generation. Oh. Isn't yeah. that wonderful? Thank you. Thank you. We need more teachers in this world. Cheryl, sure, what about you? <laughs> well, I've had a... this, uh, this <laughs> coaching. Incidentally, Cheryl and I did our, that's where we met. We did our coaching qualification together. Yeah. For as long day. as I can remember, I've been working for a seriously long time. I won't give the, uh, the number of years away because that'll just highlight our, um, how mature I am. Oh, mature you are. <laughs> <laughs> so it was for a long time or ever since I can remember um, with my family being seriously involved in in business my grandfather started his own mining company when he moved when he um, was young took over from his grandfather who came from England yes. um, so having been brought up in a in a family of business owners uh, it just was the logical thing for me to to go to uni and do my Bachelor of Commerce degree. Mm. Uh, when I originally went, I thought I'd become an accountant, but uh, life throws you these curveballs every now and then, um, which then make you change uh, sort of direction, which I did. Yeah. I enjoyed the marketing, sort of economic side of things. Um, and I started my career doing, doing marketing in the motor industry um, and then moved into financial services where I've been for most of my mm. life. So I was in product management uh, and then moved into the whole change and transformation space. I enjoy new things all the time. I enjoy changing. I enjoy 
transforming, I enjoy innovating. Um, and so for the last sort of 15 years, I've spent a spare time in that space. And I think, you know, from a coaching perspective, where did that come about? I had the privilege when I was working at Absa Bank to have an executive coach for 18 months. Mm. The impact on my life was just tremendous. And at the time I thought, you know, as a leader of, a pe of people, you have a responsibility towards developing and helping release the potential that people have. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, I think, in life just, you know, um, struggle to do that. And with a little bit of help, as with me, I, I, I managed to achieve some of my lifelong uh, goals and objectives. Um, so that's when I made the decision to actually learn the skill of coaching, where I met mm. you, my dear friend. Um, and have implemented that in most of my roles, uh, sort of in life, both as leader, as coach, as an executive coach, um, on external, as part of an external panel, but also as part of internal panels within corporates. Um, it's, it's the thing that gives me the greatest kick. Uh, you know, I enjoy work coming alongside people, listening mm. to what it is that they struggle with, um, helping them unearth the potential that they have in the world, you know. God created each one of us to be a masterpiece. A lot of us don't yeah. reach that because for whatever reason, but it's coming alongside, working together with them and just being an encouragement and support to help people take that next step um, towards achieving what it is they're here to do on, on earth. So I think, you know, that as a leader of people um, doing that, I just think that that is something that, you know, um, has given me the most joy, most joy mm -hmm. in life. It's so interesting because you have such similar um, sort of uh, threads that run through both of what you want to do. Uh, just a little bit of a different uh, audience, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Andrea, you, you are um, passionate about the IT space and about coding. Tell us a little bit about what on earth is coding. Please educate us. <laughs> Why okay. It, why so, yeah. Why is it important as well? Okay. So, okay. So, coding or programming is the language between um, man and machine. So, like people, they are like people. There are different uh, <laughs> languages that can be used to communicate with computers. Okay. Um, and <laughs> some of the languages include like Java, Delphi, Python, and so on. And, but in simple terms, coding is a set of instructions that tells the computer what to do. Okay. Yeah. And what makes it important to get it to all um, children? Um, so we are currently in the fourth industrial revolution. So this means that there is going to be a vast number of jobs in the programming field. Oh. And um, as teachers and parents, our role is to create competencies in learners yeah. um, that are relevant to the times that yeah. they are learning in. So um, with learners, having a programming background, um, they are more likely to have a relevant skill set that they can fall back on career-wise. And they will inevitably have a greater chance at creating a better life for themselves. This is where preparation needs opportunities. Yeah. Okay, so that's quite simple. So it's the language we're going to have to learn to speak to computers. Cheryl, can you imagine? Yeah, um, no. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite wild. It's quite wild. It really is quite wild. So well done on that. Well done on that. Um, maybe, Cheryl, if you can tell us a little bit about your warrior mom. Um, Ooh. identity and, and where that and what that means to you uh, and where you know where that is coming from because that's your passion as well yeah you know as I said earlier you know life uh life sometimes throws you a curveball you know when you are early in your marriage the traditional thing is you meet someone you get married next step is we got to do the whole children thing and we went through that process um you know and picture perfect uh, pregnancy no issues nothing up on scans day one well he decided six weeks ahead of time that he had enough of this hanging around uh, waiting for the world to start 
Yeah. So he was six weeks early, um, which was completely unexpected. I had, it was a Sunday night. Uh, I had actually booked to go and see the hospital on the Monday. Yeah. Um, and anyway, um, I hadn't, I hadn't even left work yet. So he started the world completely, and it always, he arrived completely unexpectedly. Um, and for right from the word go, we started, uh, I remember when uh, I had given birth, uh, they, they sort of moved me into a separate room where yeah. I thought, hmm, it's very strange what's happening. Um, and the first bit of news was shared with us and that's where we found out about uh, his eye. So macroophthalmia is really, he was only born with one developed eye. Yeah. So, you know, as parents to a newborn, this is not something that you, uh, <laughs> you know, you put your hand up for. It's not something that you wish for, um, but it's something that, uh, you know, you, you, we had to deal with right from the word go. So as new parents, you know, dealing with a new child is, is a learning curve on its own. Dealing with a new child with, with medical challenges is something yeah. completely different. So you're starting to navigate the world of microophthalmia. What does that yeah. mean? What's his life about? What are the decisions that we have to make? Um, it was just a roller coaster ride uh, for the first sort of uh, six months. He was continuously ill, continuously in hospital. Yes. We were in hospital every sort of uh, six weeks for, three, for two weeks at a time. Yes. Um, when he was six months old, he had what, we, what they call an orbital expander inserted into his eye. And that is to allow the socket, the bone structure to grow. Otherwise, yes. the one side of his face would have collapsed. And so essentially it's like a balloon inside of his eye, which we then injected every three months for saline to help the bone structure grow. Yeah. So sort of navigating this, yeah. he went into hospital when he was six months old, we had surgery and he recovered from the surgery, but he just, he was struggling to recover from uh, just health wise. So we were advised to go and see our pediatrician. We asked for a new ped. Um, and we spent probably an hour and a half with her and she said, no, something, something seriously wrong here. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, and uh, I can't describe, I can't share with you how that sort of that made us feel. MRI scans, blood scans, milk scans, yeah. all of the various things, eventually to find out that his myelin sheath around the neuron, so it's a fatty tissue that grows around each neuron, uh, hadn't properly developed. So that was delays of messages from the brain to the rest of the body, to the rest yeah. of his body. Yeah. Um, we were told right up front, you know, um, don't get too attached to him, put him in a home and forget about him before you get too attached was the advice of one pediatrician at the time, oh. you know, and <laughs> we let <laughs> out that this pediatrician had two children of his own with cerebral palsy. And, um, you know, that, that sort of advice as a new parent, we would just know, he is our child, he's a child that's, that's been given to us by God, we have a responsibility to, um, to try and make the best life for him as possible. Mm. And that, you know, having left the hospital, starting to navigate, well, what is cerebral palsy about? You know, what are, the, what are, what are his options in life? Uh, you know, what do we have to do in terms of trying to provide him with the best life? And it was a whole string of physio and occupational therapy yeah. and speech therapy and years and years and years of, of that. As I said, you know, he was, he was very ill for three years. He moved closer to, closer to the hospital. Um, it was just never ending. We just felt like an ongoing barrage of what's next, what's next, yes. what's next. You know, and when your child is struggling with life like this, you do, you find yourself becoming extremely protective yeah. extremely you know you're 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 in a world that you never anticipated being um you had to deal with the reaction of the rest of the world um onto his his disability you know being in a position where people dear, near and dear to you didn't know what to say how to react to it yeah. you know you do find yourself becoming how do i how do i provide the best life for him um, and fight for the opportunities uh, to, to ensure that uh, he does have the best life possible. So mm -hmm. you do, you take on that, you know, you pick up that, that shield, <laughs> you put you on that breastplate. 
<laughs> you know, um, and we were determined right from the word go that we wouldn't hide him from the world because, you know, and, and I know because, you know, being in that position prior to the neck, uh, you always approach someone with serious challenges. Uh, you know, you, you, you're awkward. You don't know what to say. You don't know what the right thing is to say. Yeah. And so you rather avoid making contact with people than sort of approaching it and, and, and learning. What is yeah. this about? What does it mean? How do I react? What's the right thing to do? And so we had to deal with that um, for a long time. Um, but, you know, it's Kevin and I during that time made the decision to always adopt a position of teaching um, you know, lots of children used to come up to us and say, well, what's wrong with Mickey? Why can't he walk? You know, why can't he speak? Um, and, you know, just, just going down to their level and explaining, you know, the uniquenesses um, that different people in life have, um, but that they're all here to be loved. And, you know, we all here to make a contribution. Each one has made a contribution. And just looking back on Nick's life, um, you know, in, in, in your low times, you think, what kind of life is he going to have? Um, but 22 years in and looking back, I have a look at um, and extremely proud of the impact that he's had in people's lives. Um, and you get to see the, the purpose and the intent, even with all the challenges that he has of someone who is so physically impacted in life. And, you know, in the eyes of someone who's uh, you know, who has normal kids and who's lived a normal life themselves, um, you know, you, uh, you see that even, even uh, individuals uh, that God has put on this earth have roles to play and have yeah. impacts in life to make. Um, and we all have a choice in terms of how we're going to respond and come alongside people like that. Yeah. Um, and sort of walk the journeys with them. And there have been people in my life who have been, who have done that. And lots of people who have, you know, after, after meeting Nick on, I have learned something from him. I thought that people, I remember distinctly one lady who's super <laughs> smart and intelligent who said to me, you know, Cheryl, I'm so embarrassed to admit that actually I thought that people in a wheelchair didn't have any sort of cognitive ability and I've subsequently learned that that's not necessarily true, no. um, that no. there are different sort of medical uh, issues that people have. And, uh, but that also they have certain skill sets that others who are awesome. relatively speaking uh, and are very healthy don't have. Mm. So, yeah, you do. You are super protective. Yeah, we often ask the question, you know, have we been overprotective? You know, um, and, but, you it's a, but it's a journey that we take every day with him. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that so openly. Ria, you know, coming from your side as a teacher, um, one of the things is, um, firstly, I'm not sure, and, and this is not something you've prepped, so just see if, you, if you're comfortable with this, but, you know, have you come across a case where you've had to um, educate children on children who are different from them, firstly, in any way? And what impact do you think that um, the 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 home life has on schooling and on learning? Um, okay, so the impact <coughs> that the home life has on schooling, um, I did come across uh, kids that have had negative impacts where mm -hmm. uh, that um, really smart students who sometimes perform badly like due to problems at home where mm -hmm. uh, in one learner in particular, um they had to look after their siblings due to the fact that they were being raised by a single parent who works more like more than um one job just to make sure that they have food on the table so but like i cannot control the learner's homes uh, life but yeah. i hope that as the teacher yeah i am able to ease the load of studying by being uh, effective in what i do yeah. And uh, school is sometimes an escape for learners, and yeah. I want to make it beneficial to their future. And um, you cannot do much about the card someone has been dealt, but um, as an educator, we can as uh, aspire to teach them how to make the most of it. And yes, we have um, had to uh, discuss about how um, 
to deal with ki with kids with disabilities and stuff like um we were like in university we were taught mm -hmm. how to uh, help kids with disabilities yeah yeah, yeah. So just to recreate a sensitivity around that, I think especially in South Africa, yes. we, mm -hmm. uh, I think we're lacking, we're lacking in that space. But you know, Cheryl, I just want to firstly condone you uh, or just honor you for your courage and for, uh, because mm -hmm. I know that uh, when people said that Nicky, Nicholas could not um, read, you had him reading by the age of five, right? That's right. He was actually yeah. reading by, by, by very early age. Um, yeah. And... Was, yeah yeah and, and you know what i love about what you and kevin have done in terms of raising him and you're very modest about this because i thought this is the first thing you would say is that uh do you know that uh, nicholas with his dad and his mom as a team have actually done ironman and do races and do triathlons and half marathons and climbs <laughs> <laughs> so, so like i just want to say Cheryl, wow Wow. <laughs> Not only have you blown it out the park, but you've made, uh, you know, you've helped Nicholas to experience things. Um, mm. And then what advice would you give, just in a nutshell, in a nugget, what advice would you give parents who are in the same boat, who are wanting, you, you know, I, I often speak of something called living grief. Because mm. when you, yeah. you know, there is a, there's a, there's a grief that comes when you look at your child and he cannot walk or he cannot do things that normal people can do yeah. yet you've still helped him to achieve many of his dreams yeah. you know which is really admirable so in a nutshell and in a nugget what would you advise other parents with children who are perhaps mourning and living with this grief and it's hard let's not let's mm. not kid ourselves it's hard mm. so what advice would you give them you know when when you're in become a parent of a of a child with severe medical challenges is you're just reeling from you know and I think you've got to allow yourself that time to really understand the condition you do go through a process where you know you think what did I do wrong yeah. so you you have senses of guilt um, and all of these things are very natural part if you think about you know the process that one does go through through grief uh, blame is one of those uh, phases which you do go through and I think whilst you're going through that and you're adjusting to a normal you didn't anticipate or a way of life you didn't anticipate yeah. is to just um, is to find yourself to know that you know it's perfectly normal for you to go through these processes and you're right it is living unlike grief where you know there's the initial process the person is gone however and you learn to you learn to adjust to not having the person around. Uh, in this case, you're living with the grief every day because he's there every day, and you mm. and you're seeing the 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 you know sort of the lost potential um, as you would looking at it from a perspective of normal or normality yeah. or how we classify yeah. normal life, you know. Um, but these kids are here; they are extraordinary, and so you've got to look at your children that way and go you're extraordinary in the world. Um, and so how do I ensure that, you know, you live an extraordinary life? Um, and for a lot of parents, they, they, they think that there are no uh, opportunities for their children yeah. to do sport, to be educated um, and to maximize their potential. Mm. Um, and the thing is, is, is a, nobody knows their child better than the parent does. Yeah. Um, and you will get a lot of naysayers in your life who will say, well, you know, he's got this, he'll never have the potential, mm -hmm. he'll never do this, he'll never, do I cannot tell you how many times we were told, he will never walk, he will never talk, he will never go to school, he will, at the moment, he is at college here in the United Kingdom, yes, he's doing an inclusive education course, um, but, you know, he's doing all those things, he never stops talking, uh, you know, he's done Iron Man, That's how true. many... How many normal people can say, well, I've done an Ironman. My son's done more than me in this instance from a yes. sporting achievement perspective. Yeah. And I would just say, you know, just having a look at the sporting way is you find a way to participate and you have to be really innovative around how you do this. My husband, Kevin, developed a lot of the equipment that we needed, engaged with a lot of suppliers in this regard. We did 
went through trial and error. We, we, yeah. we learned a lot through the various races that we did, um, but we never gave up. And I think, you know, it's that not giving up um, on what it is that you want to do together as a family. Yes. Um, and so, and being encouraged. So whether you're a family who is into the arts, to sport, or whatever you've done is to pursue those with your kids and to find a way and to challenge, to challenge because, um, you know, we do need to include them. Um, so from an education perspective or inclusion in life, um, you, you have to do that. And there are many examples in South Africa of people who have been, you know, um, groundbreaking in this area. You know, I remember we wanted to do the comrades with Nick and uh, we were told we were not allowed to, but that um, because, you know, we would be a danger to other athletes on the road. Yeah. Subsequently, you know, that, you know, the Comrades Association has been challenged significantly in that. And, and now just dis disabled uh, sportsmen can do the Comrades. You have to, you know, there's, there's some things that you are called to be, to go against what is yeah. um, established principle and policy and mindset and say, this is possible. We can do this. We can do this safely. Um, and this is how we're going to do it. Um, and so that's, you do, you just don't, don't give up. No, I, don't, I think, you know, generally speaking, parents will go out there and fight for their kids. All kids go through challenges in life. It's the same here. It's just, you know, go out there and, and, and don't give up on, on the dreams that you have as a family uh, um, and including your kids who, who are, are challenged in that way. Yeah. Um, well done. Well done, Cheryl. I, I can't imagine. I mean, it's been an incredible. It's incredible to watch. Okay. It's incredible. <laughs> it's been an incredible laugh. <laughs> uh, Andrea, one of the things that 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 you um, you know that that is important in teaching and in is the role of parents and the role of supporters or guardians in children's lives. Um, what what advice do you have for parents? Um, in terms of educating education for their children and you know what makes education so important in this day and age um the advice that i would give to parents is that the key to helping your child attain a better life is to first understand your child um not every child is going to aspire to be a doctor or a lawyer and there's nothing wrong with that so um, as a parent, take time to understand their strengths, their passion, and their purpose. Um, you shouldn't have a preconceived idea of what your child should be. Yes, you will have to push them to aim higher. Um, yeah. every, uh, all kids are lazy, but that's okay. And um, you should find ways to understand your child uh, and their passion and to help them look for careers that will be fulfilling to them. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes parents uh, want to give the kids a better life, but they force their dreams onto the kids. Oh. Um, so each kid is unique and being an educator, you see this. Some kids yeah. are natural born leaders while others, um, while some kids can see a finished painting by looking at a blank page. Mm. And um, so give your kids the assurance that you will have their back and you are on mm. their team. Mm. And yeah. um, the importance of good education. Um, if there is one thing that I have seen, um, I've seen that the only thing in life, um, the only thing life gives you is opportunities. And sometimes we don't have the life we want um, yeah. because we are not equipped for the opportunities that come our way. And um, education equips us for these opportunities and it is an investment in yourself. Mm -hmm. So education is not learning in classrooms or acing tests, but education is changing your mindset and finding solutions to, um, mm -hmm. to a world full of problems. Um, for example, when we look at the rise in gender-based violence, um, yeah. many of the women stay in those homes because they have nowhere to go, no yeah. skill set to fall back on. And yeah. um, education would have been their freedom. Um, it could have been their livelihood as well. Yeah. And so you can never underestimate the power of 
uh, an educated mind. Yeah. And when you think better, you act better and the quality of your life improves. Yeah. So, yeah. It's so, yeah, it's so important what you said, you know, we're speaking about education and the fact that it opens up uh, the doors. I, um, I was in a similar situation and went back to, to study at probably 36 when I needed to, to mm-hmm. make a shift in my life. And of course, you know, being who I am, I took on four qualifications at the same time um, and, a separate, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a change in my life. Um, but what it did was change the trajectory of, of, of my career and opened up doors that wouldn't necessarily have opened up. It was very difficult, you know, studying at three in the morning and things like that. But at 36, I was able to do it. And so it's never too late as well to invest yes. in your education no matter how old you are you know um so even if you're um you know if you've missed the boat still it's not it's never ever too late yeah Phil, can you tell us a little bit about resilience and and the role it's played um in in uh just in life and in your coaching world um tell us a little Mm -hmm. bit about what what is key to being resilient because we're living in very difficult times and and we've seen the landscape of just normal schooling and education changing vastly um so so what makes resilience very important in this time and day i think you know it's it's to be mindful of um for me life uh, is never a a smooth ride you know we're all going to go through periods in our life where we are feeling more challenged than others yeah but it's always to keep your sort of goals and the vision that you have for your life front and center and to know that during those times sometimes you have to you are going to go through periods where you're putting in more time more hours where yeah. you are exhausted but it's about keeping that that goal and objective front and center and um every day for me it's become a dailyness. So it's taking up that cross on a daily basis and saying, right, uh, give me strength for today and let me endure what I have to and achieve what I have to today in order to make sure I take that next step forward towards achieving the goal. Um, And sometimes you go through life where, you know, you you are um, uh, extraordinarily tired, um, having just come out of uh, extreme sort of burnout after my previous corporate role yeah. uh, the criticality of listening to yourself and uh, listening to your body listening to your heart and your soul and saying right I need to take some time off and it's okay to do that mm. um, because I think in life there are going to be pr- times where you are going at it full tilt and there are going to be times in your life where it's okay to to walk slowly you know yeah. but at least you are just taking that one step every day So it is about that. It's about what is it that I'm achieving here? What is it that I'm working towards? Um, That is sort of your constant here. Um, And and to with renewed sort of grace every day, Mm. say I continue to do that. Um, You know, I think all of us, I don't think any of us in life can say, can, can say, that there haven't been times where we've gone, I'm just going to give up now. You know, this is just too hard. I'm finding this just too incredibly hard. But I think, you know, we surprise ourselves with just how resilient we can be. um, If we just, as I said, keep that vision there, make sure that we are constantly working towards that uh, and doing the work that's necessary, you know? So that's on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's also taking care of yourself because I think resilience uh, requires that, um, that you serve yourself as well because I think as women generally, um, and as uh, we, we do put others first all the time, mm. or at least that's from my point of view, we serve others, we've got serving hearts, um, and we forget to serve ourselves sometimes. So I think it's really important that we, we keep the balance, listen mm. to yourself, take the time when you need to, and then go full, t- full tilt when you are re-energized and that. Um, so... So that's sort of my take on resilience. And it's a daily thing. It is a daily thing. And it's an ebb and flow thing. Um, you know, and it's and it's just remember to be kind to yourself, irrespective of what's going on in life. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. That's very, very useful. Yeah, we were chatting just before this interview, 
And I asked you, I said to you, you know, the landscape of teaching has changed, but mm. uh, teachers definitely don't keep office hours, you know. Um, so a school day may end at 2.30 or 3 o'clock, but certainly a teacher's life doesn't end. You know, how do you, what do you do to keep going, to keep resilient, to keep motivated in your work? Because you've got to show up the next day and be energetic for the kids again, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So basically what motivates me is that um, I've come, okay, so I have come across an author uh, whose name is uh, Simon Sinek. I'm yeah. not sure if you heard about him, but yeah, who wrote a book called uh, Start, uh, Start With Why. Yeah. So the why behind everything I do is to nurture and um, improve the lives of those around me. Yeah. So I am motivated when I see a learner understand coding. And okay. um, also when I see learners, <laughs> yes. And also when I see learners help each other understand the work. Yeah. Um, I am also motivated when my learners come up to me uh, to talk about their personal lives. Um, I think that as a woman living in um, in these mm -hmm. times where uh, I have the freedom to create my own life, I yeah. feel that it is my it is my um, responsibility to make the most of my life. Yeah. And um, ultimately, I am motivated when I have given myself, and it has helped those around me. Yeah. So you get your energy just from the from the the, the students giving back to you. Is that right? Yes. Because it's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's it's very important what you both said is to understand the why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're going mm -hmm. slowly on a mm -hmm. day, it's to understand exactly the why and and to hold on mm -hmm. to the why we're doing this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So what is your um? What is your legacy that you would like to leave in this world? As a coach, as a coach and a warrior mom. Maybe I'm going to come back to you. Can I go to Andrea and give you a moment <laughs> to catch your, to, to, to get your thoughts? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Is that okay, Andrea? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you give us the answer to that? What, what is the legacy that, because I know you've started, just tell us a little bit about the coaching uh, that you're doing, the coaching program that you're running right now and what that is about. And then tell us about your legacy. Okay, so I've uh, partnered with Succeed as mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we started coding, uh, teaching small kids how to uh, code and to get into coding. So we're using a, um, a beginning a program called Scratch. And it helps kids to visually uh, see how coding works so that it can help them to think along those lines mm -hmm. and it uh, introduces them to coding and it makes it fun. Yeah. Where you can, yeah. And it's interactive as well. Okay. So, yeah. Great. So what is and the legacy you want to achieve? Yeah. Sorry, I, I interrupted you there. What were you saying? Um, uh, so, uh, as in what I want to take uh, my learners to take away from me. Yeah. So, firstly, um, that they should know that they have someone on their side. And yeah. um, I hope that they feel comfortable enough to come to me with their problems. And I would also like for them to realize that life, um, that the life they want is attainable. And um, it is their responsibility to take the opportunities that they are given and use them to build the life of their dreams. Yeah. And um, if you do not get the opportunities, create them. So that's what I would want my learners to take. Great, great. So, mm -hmm. okay, you look very deep in thought there, Cheryl. Tell us, tell us, what is the legacy that you would like to see? Oh. I mean, there's so many, uh, just so many things, but, you know, I think uh, what's important for me is to, is to come alongside people and encourage them never to give up on uh, achieving what it is that they want to in life, you know, yeah. and it's, and it's helping people uh, take that next step up, um, yeah. you know, coming alongside them 
and taking that next step up, irrespective of, you know, what challenges they face in life. Um, to be that confidant and to sort of gently challenge people as, you know, breaking through the mindsets, the preconceived mindsets that might exist, where they yeah. go, I can't do that because I'm not good enough, because I don't have the right challenge skill sets, mm -hmm. because I don't have the right education, because I come from a family where, you know, that wasn't allowed because, and there are a whole myriad of different reasons. Yeah. Um, but it's getting people to see that you are here to add value into the world. Um, these are your skills and talents um, and to encourage them and support them in terms of achieving that. Um, so I think just in terms of uh, looking back at uh, how I've been gifted and using those gifts, I would say that would probably be in um, one of the, um, one of the sort of visions that I have in every person yeah. that I interact with. Yeah. Um, and that's so important. I think, you know, coming alongside in this very competitive world and not forgetting the humanness of everybody mm. and the fact that we all go through challenges and we all, uh, we all have work to do on ourselves all the time um, mm. is never to compare yourself with anybody else and to say, I am a masterpiece. I've been, I've been very unique created yeah um and it's to accept those and and to elevate my strengths in that in that specific area because we do we come from a very competitive world and you know we do want to compare ourselves to other people yeah um yeah. and it's so important not to do that is to is to utilize and and you know sort of uh change the world with mm. the unique perspectives that you that you do bring and I think that's sort of, and that, and that applies in my role as warrior mom too, is to break yeah. those, break those boundaries, break those preconceived ideas about what people can and cannot do. Yeah. Um, because we do, we make those assumptions to say, oh, well, they're in a real chill, they'll never achieve much in life or, you know, whatever it might be, yeah. you know, um, and you'll be amazed if you draw alongside people as to what they actually have achieved and accomplished in life and how they've changed the world. You know, yeah. and in your own way that you can impact the world for good. And I think yeah. that's just, uh, if I, at the end of my life, say, have I achieved everything, it's, it, it would be um, that I've worked with a number of people in terms of doing that. Yeah. Um, not that I've achieved titles <laughs> and this and that. It's not about, and for me, you know, yes, like, you know, for achievement in, in your life is important because I do think it shapes and it molds you, but it's not the only thing. For me, it's not the primary driver in my life. Um, uh, to me, the, the, I get the greatest kick out of, out of helping people achieve and maximize um, yeah. everything that, that, that they've been born with. So amazing, amazing. And tell me, Cheryl, I mean, you've been running an, ex, uh, an exceptional program at the moment with churches and church leaders yep. in, the, yep. in the space of, um, of coaching, actually coaching, building a leadership competency of coaching in yep. church leadership. Tell yep. us a little bit about that, just to, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell. And again, this is, you know, how we connect with communities um, and the whole coaching angle is, you know, how do to... to um, to share the gift of coaching with other people in terms of its basic skills. How am I present for people? How do I build the capacity to really listen to people, to ask yes. the right questions? Um, and I think that core skill in communities, as you come alongside the various communities that you work, that you live in, work in, socialize in, and even in your families, um, is to is to be there, human to human. Yeah. Um, and 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 to draw people in you know there's nothing if you connect with someone who you know is listening to you intently who is interested in what it is that you have to offer the world um and in 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 the church construct is uh is utilizing coaching in building communities um yeah. and in 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 the communities that we live in and we um as i said as we work in is how do you how do you shine your light out there? Um, how do you become that uh, you know that light in the darkness? How yeah. do you become that salt um, of the earth? How do you become that person that people feel comfortable to go with and talk to about things that they wouldn't normally speak to other people about? So it's that it's that sense that people get from you around this is a trustworthy person. This is someone who takes the time mm. to listen to me. 
this is this person who um who uh sorry didn't That's switch so my good. phone didn't switch my phone off um here we go yeah you're back mom um so so yeah yeah great great thank you you know what what in, you know you've been running a pilot program for succeed um, tell us a little bit about some of the learnings that you and what what's your vision for this program as uh, so okay my vision for this program is that it would uh, okay it's starting off small mm. so like later on when we get more people it, it will reach like a wider uh, wider community. people like a lot of more people yeah a yeah. wider community and so it can help bring learners or help bring kids um to understand uh, more technology and that, because as you know technology is um becoming the, the number one thing in this world yeah the future yeah. yeah yeah so my vision is for this program to grow yeah, yeah. great that's so exciting because it's something that we want to see. We want to see all children, um, you know, have access to this type of uh, IT and technology, this type of learning as well. Mm. You know, we're coming, yeah. uh, we're sorry, we're coming near, near the end. And I just want to ask you, Cheryl, um, mm. what is your message of hope for the world today? Oh. Oh, <laughs> do you want me to come back to you? Do you need a minute? <laughs> uh, yeah, let me think about that one for a sec. Well, wow. yeah, and and maybe maybe when you're thinking about it, think about the role of your faith uh, in this mm. in, in your in your response in your response as well. Yeah, Andrea, what is your message of hope for for the world, for South Africa, for children? Um, is that you should always look for the positive in each situation and yeah. you are only limited by the boundaries that you create in your mind. Yeah. And um, you are important and you have a purpose. So you should find that purpose. Oh, that's beautiful. That really is beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And have you found your purpose? I mean, when I asked you for your bio, one of the things that made me smile, you said, um, I'm a feminist who wants to see women dominate the IT world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> is, it, it made me smile. It made me smile because is it because there's not many women in your in your area of work? What what made you uh, say that? Um, there are no, there are teachers and uh, people in work that are females, but there's um, less. Uh, female teachers yeah. in the IT uh, department because yeah. it's very scarce. So, um, for instance, in my school, there's only two computer teachers. So, okay. yeah, so we need to see more women becoming uh, more into technology because, as you know, it's mostly like a male dominated area with the uh, okay. technology okay. field. Yeah. So, we do need more women to become more to take uh, up this active in, mm. yeah to take excellent. up the it field excellent and in the workplace yeah thank you and thank you for being one of those women andrea we we really uh, honor you for that thank you for for taking that up thank you cheryl what yeah, is think... your message of hope <laughs> <laughs> um you know i think it does change throughout your life um and I think life um, molds and shapes those dreams and aspirations that you have and, and changes significantly. Well, for me, at least it did. Mm. Um, I think prior to Nick being born, it was um, being that person who was going to achieve in business, who was going to be successful, yes. you know, and way back then uh, it was about... Um, demonstrating that you are as good as everybody else and and believing in that you know it's mm. not listening to those voices it's about understanding yourself 
and the abilities that you have and having the courage um, to achieve what it is that you hope to in life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and never say never, never give up a hard time. You know, it's, um, I think that's the one thing. And then with, uh, with the birth of Nick um, and the challenges that has, that has challenged me on a much deeper level in terms of, from a spiritual perspective about having hope that Nicholas has the best life that he can, right. you know, and, 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 and do, it's a dailiness for me. It's not a, you know, there's always that lifelong goal, but there's also the, and it's, and for me, that's hoping in the miraculous. It's hoping in achieving against all odds. It's, yeah. uh, it's because for, for me, it, it's a case of, I believe uh, in in the power of miracles that they exist, that they happen, and obviously, as a parent to a child, you do hope for for those miracles to happen in life. And so, and that is like really challenging your your Christian belief sets, and you know, also knowing that sometimes it does happen, sometimes it doesn't. But the but the hope that you know that I and him and my husband, you know, we we we. Um, we know that on a daily basis, we are here to impact the lives of people yeah. one day at a time, uh, inspire people one day at a time. And our hope is, is that we change mindsets uh, one day at a time. Uh, and we, 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 we hope that people have a different perspective on, on, on people with differences. Um, mm. And so I think for me, there's the, in my own personal capacity, what do I hope for? What do I, what do I strive for? What do I, achieve? What do I want to achieve? So I have done that from a corporate perspective. Now I'm, you know, I'm hopeful around the career in coaching and other things that are starting to change, um, you know, because I'm doing a 180 literally on my, on my sort of working life and I have new hopes and dreams there. Um, yeah. But again, it's on the other side as mom, as wife, as, um, is, to, is to hope that in who I am every day and how I decide to treat people every day um, and how to impact every day, my hope is that impact it positively and that um, we inspire and encourage others to go out there and achieve so many times on Ironman races. A lot of people who are very abled have come back to us and said, if you, with the challenges that you have, and this is my husband yeah. who is just unbelievably um, powerful in this regard, can achieve what you have, taking somebody along with you. And, yeah. you know, I moan and grumble uh, about being very normal. You know, you encourage me to get off the couch every day, and go for that run when I'm grumbling that I'm tired and this and that. I just think of you two. And I go, you have got absolutely no reason not to do this. Yeah. And so that, that for me is, um, is just in the dailiness of life, in how you impact people, in how you treat people, uh, that you leave an impression with them that will hopefully inspire them to, uh, to, to make the relevant changes that they need to in order to be impactful in their own lives. Wow. So, you know, in terms of legacies and, and that, I think that's just with the life that we've had, like, you know, the, the, what we see as being how we're going to change the world. What legacy are we going to leave? And it is yeah. in that, it's in that dailiness. It's, it's in, in that, the dailiness. it's in the dailiness. It's, you know, yeah, they're the, the big goals. I want to do this. And, you know, in terms of races, we've all had those, those aspirations, but I think it's, you know, those are, they happen on an ad hoc basis but I live my life every day. And so how do I choose every day to, to make an impact in every single person that I speak to on the phone, face-to-face, -face, over Zoom, which is like the latest thing we do today, um, and to be there and to support and to encourage and to leave Thank that you. with people so that they, they do the same thing. They carry it, they carry it forward. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. That's that's quite admirable. And thank you for, for sharing your, your message of hope. I think one of the things we want to do this afternoon is sort of to amplify the voices of these two amazing um, heroes. You know, what Cheryl says is to be a hero every day and to mm. be a hero consistently. That mm. takes grit. That mm. takes grit with many challenges. 
uh, and in spite of the challenges. So please go and check out Team Goward, uh, Google them. Um, they're on Facebook and they're on, on you know, the internet. Uh, just looking at their pictures, it will inspire you, <laughs> I promise you. Okay. So Thank go you. and have a look at uh, Team Goward. And with Andrea, um, you know, one of the things about uh, launching the, the coding program into the world and running a pilot already is that if you want to get involved, how, you know, please just let us know um, if you'd like to, to sponsor a child, if you'd like for um, us to sponsor a session or for Andrea to run a session for you, please let us know, just be in touch and, um, uh, you yeah. know, you can inbox uh, succeed and, and we will come back to you on that. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Andrea, before we close? Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, it's all. All good? Yeah. All good. <laughs> Cheryl, is there anything in a nutshell, Cheryl? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I just encourage people to go and be their best selves. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really just want to say thank you so much to both of you. You know, you haven't chosen uh, easy, easy professions. Uh, teaching is not an easy profession, especially with so many, um, so many shifts and changes in this world. It's something. It's a career that's morphing as well and evolving with technology um, coming alongside it and. I think with so many socioeconomic challenges, it's it's become more and more difficult. And I see my my sister is Shara Gavinda. She she's a teacher, and I see the hours that she puts in, and the dedication, and the even the weekends that she puts in. It's just amazing the work that teachers do. So to all educators and to all the teachers, thank you so much. This is definitely a calling. Um, and Tendra, thank you for choosing teaching and for for being obedient to that passion. You know, for lining up your dolls and teaching them all the school lessons. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for bringing your vast years of experience, your resilience, your just kind of matter of factly kind of like, you know, so what if he's, if, if he's in a wheelchair, we're just going to get on with this and do it. So thank you so much. You're, uh, you're an amazing, amazing friend and an amazing um, hero, an everyday hero doing this every day. Mm -hmm. um, to close, I, I want to read something to, to both of you. Um, that I wrote, and I, I hope that it blesses you and that it inspires you as well. So it's called The Calling, Banishani, Ban, Banishani Ford, me. <laughs> <laughs> Ever loved something so fiercely that you would leap out for it at a moment's notice to answer its call, to follow its leading. It is the one thing that arrests your body, that captures your thoughts, and in your dreams, you have gone there time and again. Distant, yet familiar. You know that you know that you know. It is the one whisper, the one question over and over in your soul. Gently knocking, always waiting. It is the calling that will get you out of the boat to walk onto this fluid sea. To to walk onto this fluid sea with a fierce passion to reach the other side. A heart that will not turn back, counting not the cost, breaking the chains of mediocrity, leaving the safety of the boat to walk into this greatness, silencing the voices that warn of your drowning, knowing only that you have to walk the sea. To answer this call, a mustard seed of faith a little courage to answer the constant knocking now, growing louder and louder. This is the call. This is the whisper that only you can answer, that you know you must answer. You know it. It is the reason that you're here. And only you and only you can answer this call. Thank you. So I Thanks, hope that is. <laughs> I hope that it is a blessing to you. Um, and as we come to the close of this uh, this hour together, I really just want to thank everybody for joining us again. Thank you, Facebook fam. Thank you for for always joining, for your feedback, for your questions. If we didn't get to any of your questions, please feel free to put them into the comments column. We will come back to you and we will answer 
answer them as best as possible. Um, and from the team at Succeed, from Richard Maestri and Patrick Stevens and myself, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this Friday, uh, this Sunday, <laughs> my days are lost, joining us this Sunday <laughs> evening. Have a wonderful week and uh, may God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you and may hope always light your way. And may you continue to walk in grace and in strength through this pandemic. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.